Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. I need everybody today, everybody that's listening, I need you to catch fire today. I want you to catch fire today. You want to phrase it another way? I want you to catch on fire today. But I need you to catch fire today. I need today to be the day that you stop complaining and you do something. Do you know why a lot of people can't move forward in their life? Because they complaining about their past. They always complaining, man, about something is that explains the reason why they are. Let me help you with this right here. If you are steady complaining about the reason you are, you know, if I hadn't have met this man, if I hadn't have been involved with this woman, if I hadn't have had this baby, if I had have never went down there, if I hadn't have got arrested, if I hadn't have this, if I hadn't have that, if I had have just finished school, if I hadn't have, hey, 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 stop, stop. All that stuff that you're complaining about, Everything that you keep allowing to resonate with you as a reason to justify and explain you not being successful. Can I share something with you about all of that? Guess what it is? You didn't got past all of it. You didn't had the baby. You got arrested. They didn't kill you. You didn't finish school, but you're still standing. You met that man, he gone, he involved with two other women right now, got three other kids. Guess what? You still here and the baby's here. You got over all the injustices that were done to you. You got something happened to you when you was a kid. You're an adult now. Somebody did something to you when you was a little boy. Guess what? You a man now. Some things happen to you that you haven't found closure on. The person that you're looking for closure from has moved on. Can I tell you that everything that has happened to you, do you know you've gotten past it? So why are you steady complaining about what has happened to you that has caused you to be in this position, but do you understand that it's prohibiting you from moving forward? Stop complaining today. Catch fire. Let your past be your past. I've told this to you a hundred times on this radio, but I'm going to say it again. Bishop Jakes told me something, man, that helped me so greatly. You can't drive your car if you're going to keep looking in the rearview mirror. 
That's why the windshield is huge. The windshield is huge. The rearview mirror is this tiny thing that sits up there. Now, all it's for is so you can see stuff that's coming up on you. All the rearview mirror for is so you can assure yourself. Uh Uh-oh, listen to this. The rearview mirror is up there to assure you that you've cleared something. See, that's what the rearview mirror is for. So when you pass a car and you want to switch lanes, you can glance up there and it says, okay, you're clear now. You passed it. You can switch lanes. That's all the rearview mirror is for. It ain't for you to stare at and dictate your life with. What you tripping for, man? Catch fire today. Today, man. Quit complaining about everything that didn't happen to you. Life is 10%. What happens to you is 90% what you do about what happens to you. What are you going to do about it? So what? I got all this. Look, man, your story ain't no deeper than nobody else's. I can tell you I was homeless for three years. It's people been homeless for 30 years. How long I'm going to ride that out? Well, you know, I can't do nothing right now. I fell on hard times, and I lost my place to stay. Where are you staying now? See, the majority of people are staying somewhere right now. I was out there. I didn't have nowhere to go. I'm in a shelter now. You was under the bridge a week ago. You in the shelter now. Why are you comp- still crying about the bridge? You in the shelter now. Man. You know how you find your purpose. You get in touch with who created you. Because when God made you, he had a purpose in mind. Now, we've ignored it, and we haven't tapped into it, but we all had a purpose. You don't, and it's sometimes it takes people longer to discover the purpose. Colonel Sanders was frying chicken with a recipe that he was telling people was the best chicken in the world. Ain't nobody believe him till he turned 70. Why you think the dude that's on the Kentucky Fried Chicken signs is old? That dude ain't 20 up there. He old. He old. But you know what? He had been frying that chicken for 40 some years. They just found out about it when he was 70. But he didn't give up his purpose in life. This dude was just frying chicken. See, people keep looking for their gifts in all kinds of places. When it's right there in you, you ain't got to go to school to find your gift. You're born with the gift that God got for you. You go to school to tack it on to something else. But your gift was already given to you. You were born with that. You don't have to go to college to know your gift. Your college allows you to enhance it and find something to attach it to. And hopefully you get a degree that attaches your gift to to a vehicle where it can work. The problem with college is we go to college and we attach it to what we like or what we might be passionate about, and we ignore the gift we have. You know how many people in graduated from college ain't doing nothing they went to college for? Come on, man. You know why? Because you discover in life your gift. You discover what you was born to do. I wasn't born. You know, you know what my major was in college? It was advertising. I can't be at no desk drawing no picture for nobody. But now guess what? I can wake up every day and guess what? I can tell you. I advertise. I've been advertising my career. Come see me live. Come see me live at Madison Square Garden. Come see me live at Phillips Arena. Come see me live at Joker's Comedy Club. Come see me live at Percy's. Come see me live at Ellis's Tavern. Come see me live. Come. I've been advertising the whole time. But I had a different purpose in mind because I went and I talked to God. And this is how you do it. You go talk to God and say, hey, God, look, okay, this is the deal. I've been struggling here. I'm over 40. I still haven't found my purpose in life. Okay, but so I can quit wasting any more time. Would you help direct me and guide me to my purpose? I know you created me to do something. I just haven't found what it is. And the reason I haven't found what it is, because I've been doing things my way. I ain't been checking with you, conferring with you on anything. I ain't locked in or tried to settle it up with you. I've been just doing my thing. Well, my thing has gotten me as far as it can get me. How about you take over and do your thing? Now, can you direct me in my path? I'm an open book. Treat me like a piece of clay. I'm telling you, man, if you go to God, he'll give it to you. But see, you have not because you ask not. How many times have you asked God for it? 
this this ain't no magic trick, y'all. This is the deal. You got to catch fire today. Catch fire today. I am. I'm excited about today. I've got a lot to do. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> about to have a great day today. I got a feeling, man, that today I've I've just really decided I'm gonna be I'm gonna be special today. I am really going to be special today. My energy's good. I uh, feel blessed and favored, full of grace. I'm grateful. I'm just man. Let's go. Shirley Strawberry, Carl is not here today. Mississippi Monica Jr., Kill Spates, the legend nephew Tommy. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the people that comprise the morning show. So <laughs> let's move forward. Welcome <laughs> to the ride, Junior. What's on yeah. your mind? Uncle, let me ask you something. I, I I just need to know how to handle these situations because you know you've been to a lot of dinners, huh? You've dinners, been, you've yeah. Been, uh-huh. Yeah, you've been out to eat a lot. I went Waffle to a house I, on up, doggy. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the people house though. See, this is what I don't understand. Uncle. I don't know how to do this. I didn't do it. I should have. But if somebody cook and the food ain't good, are you supposed to just keep eating it, or you or do you tell them they have no business cooking? No. <laughs> You cannot tell a person something like that in their house. Okay. It's first of all, it's disrespectful. Okay. Now, it is against my philosophy to swallow something <laughs> repeatedly that I know is not good. You might get that first swallow in. Yeah, I might swallow that first one. Mm, but once I discover this is not, this ain't what it's supposed to be, this don't fit the flavor palette, this is disagree with my taste buds, or you miss the dish, because I know what most dishes taste like. Once I know that, my whole objective now is not to swallow again. Amen, Steve. <laughs> now, I've done some amazing things to get out of swallowing food. Yeah. yeah. You Come know, what? I've, uh, you know, Come I've on. put the napkin in my lap. Okay. You know, then a napkin in my lap, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and slowly, slowly remove the food from the plate onto the dinner napkin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you moving it, you moving yeah. it. Yeah. Once I get a lot of it off, it's not like it'll be something on there you might be able to eat, like the vegetables or the bread. So yeah. I leave that on there like I'm eating it, so I could be chewing something. But the rest of the stuff I got to get in my lap in this napkin. <laughs> then I'm gonna excuse myself. And, take and me napkin. and this whole napkin is going somewhere in their house and get it in the trash. I've set a napkin under a girl's uh, bathroom sink full of food. Just put it under there. Because I couldn't put it in the little bathroom uh, t- uh, trash can because it was small. And people would have seen it. So I balled it up and put it under a sink before. I've gone in the kitchen, act like I was getting water, threw that in the trash. I've, I've thrown food out on back porches before, but what we not finna do it's is swallow sh- again. Swallow again. again. Needless to say, that's, you guys broke up. That's, that's how I've done it, Junior. That's, that's some it. bad cooking. No, I'm telling you, I've been there. Ah, all right. <laughs> I know you broke up with the lady after that, though. Oh, hell sure. yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, the pastors are going to be here with church complaints right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time. It is time for Reverend Motown and Deacon Def Jam with church complaints. Oh, Lord. We, we, oh, we gather most gregariously Mm -hmm. as we pompatuitly move into our spodaciousness of regularity. (laughs) Come on now. We are here today to espionage. (laughs) To spy? And and revelation (laughs) for the congregation. Come on here. Amen. With anticipation of forward annihilation. Yes. Good Lord have mercy. Good God. Time for Deacon Def Jam and his church complaints. Go ahead, Deacon. All right, Pastor. Uh, 
the unvaccinated ministry wants their own church service because the vaccinated members are looking at them sideways when they come in the sanctuary, all right? So the unvaccinated ministry wants their own service just for them. Are you uh, 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 okay with doing a service for the unvaccinated? Oh, oh, absolutely. But we've laid down the conditions for the unvaccinated. Uh, your service will be held outside in the far <laughs> corner of the parking lot. <laughs> and far, far I will corner. be zooming your message out there. So <laughs> carry your unvaccinated ass on to that deep end of that parking lot and have your laptops or iPhones and Sister Perkins will send you the Zoom link. Uh-huh. And I won't even be in the church for your service. I'm doing mine from the car on the way in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's for the un- unvaccinated ministry. Come on, Deacon. All right. Uh, we need you to talk to Brother uh, Shelton Collins. Now, he's going to people's weddings. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, and when the pastor says, you may kiss the bride, he runs up there and kisses the bride dead in the mouth. <laughs> and he's got, uh, he's scheduled to go to four more weddings this coming month of February. So, uh, he's really, I, I don't know what's wrong with him, but we need you to talk to Brother Shelton Collins. I don't know if you've seen the video that's gone viral on, uh, Instagram, where, uh, Marcus had walked up on the front row and sucker punched someone. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you could hear the pastor calmly going, Marcus, Marcus. <laughs> well, uh, they finally caught up with his ass, and the dude saw him sitting on the front row and walked up and cold cocked him. So that may be the end of the kissing bandit yeah. oh, okay. at the church. All right. The church videos is going viral now. Amen. Yes, sir. All right, let me see here, Pastor. Uh, we got a situation. Uh, the blind guy, brother uh, uh, David Reynolds, and the uh, the cross-eyed brother, brother Lonnie Dixon, got into it last week. They say that they don't see eye to eye on anything, <laughs> really? but they uh, they they want to sit down and have a conversation with you uh, and get your point of view. On the <laughs> argument, if that's possible. First of all, we've got mean. to settle seven lawsuits that resulted from the blind man and the cockeyed boy fighting. Mm. There are seven lawsuits because seven people got punched in the fight that was not supposed to be <laughs> in the fight. <laughs> seven like, people? Girl. What happened? Well, when you blind and throwing punches and cockeyed and throwing punches, going to be a lot of missing. <laughs> and they was connecting with, with, with bystanders. And so we got to deal with the seven lawsuits that resulted in the blind boy and the cockeyed boy fight. Mm-hmm. Then we'll be able to sit down and, and work it out. And uh, right. we're going to ask... Uh, that you stop calling, first of all, to the blind man. You've got to stop calling this cockeyed boy or walleye. That'll that'll help. You cannot call him walleye. I asked the blind man why he called the cockeyed boy walleye, and he said because one of his eyes is always looking at the wall. (laughs) At the wall. (laughs) And so I said, well, now that'll get your ass whooped every time. (laughs) All right, uh, Pastor, due to COVID, uh, delivering babies is on back order. Uh, if you are due soon, they ask that you hold it for another month. No. Uh, Pastor, do we have an a, a old school midwife that could deliver these babies? So uh, we got some people that are expecting soon, but they saying delivering babies is on back order. But we're going to need a midwife if you uh, can uh, appoint one from the church. Yeah, we're going to uh, send Sister Gertrude Mockingbird. Gertrude who, uh, Mockingbird. Has delivered over 175 babies into this world, all of them midwives. And so Good we're going to send her over there to assist. And the uh, only thing she requires is uh, 
a hot washcloth and a pail of hot water. Mm-hmm. Amazing what she does with one what washcloth. What is the hot water? I, mean, I don't know. I have no idea what the I mean, they're going to scald the baby? What is the hot I water? I don't have for? no idea what the hot water's for, and I'm even more confused with the one washcloth. Cause yeah. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. Her technique is... She won't speak on it, but all these babies have been safe and beautiful and healthy. And healthy. Okay. And all of every lad never lost a baby. It's wonderful what she's doing. Oh, I forgot. And oh, it's a couple of things. Let me read off this list before we get out of here. A couple of things she needs a jar of petroleum jelly Vaseline. <laughs> and a, 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 a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. Don't none of this go together. Now, what is I know this what the is bat for is delivery? for. What well, I know what the bat is for. The bat is for if the case the husband try to walk in the room. <laughs> <laughs> She'll bust your right. ass dead in your head. That's what I have. <laughs> Coming up at the top of the hour, uh, we'll, we'll have some Ask the CLO questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, 50 Cent has yet another TV series that's coming soon. Uh, some sad news to report. Wendy Williams won't return to her show that until March. Um, we'll talk about that. And then there's a $426 million lottery winner in California, but they haven't come forward. Why we'll talk about enough? all these stories <laughs> at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer <sighs> Steve Harvey in the building, ready for your love question. $426 million. That's a yeah. lot of money, baby. You it can is. straighten it out. You can straighten it out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's you can get a lump sum. All right, here we go. Kiana in Texas writes, I let my boyfriend use my car to go get a COVID test. My aunt saw my car at a Wendy's drive-thru and a girl was driving. I called my boyfriend and he said the girl is his cousin and she drove because he has a fever and COVID. I told him to bring my car back and he did. Uh, He got an Uber and said he was going to quarantine elsewhere. Should I trust him and believe his story? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I sure like it. That boy right there. It's pretty clever. You yeah. know what, man? I'm a it's just, it's just hats off from an old yeah. cat that done told a bunch of lies. Man, I can't tell you, boy. If if it's not true, it was magnificent. The way you can that was my cousin. I couldn't drive because I had a fever, and now I'm quarantining somewhere else. There we go, right back over to her house. Got to go over that cousin house because she already been exposed. Two weeks. I get at least two weeks over there. Yeah. Oh, that's right, two weeks, because she's been exposed. <laughs> so we might as well quarantine together. Mm. Man, I don't know what to tell you, it's lady. Still that's, some... But you know what? I mean, it's Should really... Should trust re- him and believe Yes, yes, because that was a good one. That was good. There ain't no holes in that story. still some creative people out there. It really yeah, is. There's no holes in that story. You got to let him have that. Thank you, man. Wow. All right, Morris in Richmond, as we move on, says, I'm a 38-year-old married man, and my wife keeps nagging me about shaving my goatee because it's getting gray. I got tired of her nagging, and I told her I'll shave when she stops drawing on her eyebrows and wearing a bonnet. She got mad and kept, kept hitting below the belt. I didn't say a word, but if this happens again, should I tell her a few more things that I don't like? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dog, you should, because it look like this is going to be over. Yeah. If, if you, you keep going down, down this road, dog, this is going to be ending. Are you going to tell a few more things you don't like? You know, she drawing on her eyebrows in the bonnet. Now, in it, you know, plus this, she didn't threw something else at you she didn't like other than the goatee. Now, you finna start swinging again by some stuff you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. He's a 38-year-old man. Did they, did they say they've been married? Uh, no, how long? No. Uh-uh. Are they married, though? Yeah, they're married. He's a 38-year-old married man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You probably ain't going to see 40 with her. Say what? Probably ain't going to see 40 with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the fact that bad. you done wrote in, that he real pissed off about it. Yes. The fact that he wrote in, yeah, he wants to say something to her. He just need Uncle Steve uh, permission to go on and say it. He got some stuff he wants to say. He but just Steve, wants some confirmation. Yeah. Why doesn't he just color color his gray? He doesn't want to do that. 
Uh, he he didn't like the criticism of it, you uh. know. But you know, all he had to do was say, "All right, baby, you know, let me I get some just for men and go on put me a little color on it or something like that." Or you know, maybe you don't need a goatee no more. You know, maybe I'm not. But now, nah, let me ask you something, though, baby. If I do this for you, because you could be right, could you do something for me? Could you stop arching your eyebrows so damn much? Because <laughs> this look of huh all the day huh look. <laughs> is starting to bother me. <laughs> So it, it doesn't matter what you say as long as you say it nicely. nicely you got to try to say it nicely. It's not going to work out, though, because she came back and hit him again. So, yeah, this, yeah, this, this ain't going to work out. She's big mad, yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on to uh, Shanice in Minnesota. Shanice says, my husband and his man cave has his man cave in our basement, and it has its own entrance. He had a bunch of guys over to watch the games last week, so I didn't bother them. I went down there to clean up, and I saw a glass with lipstick on it. My husband said it was Tim's girl. I told him if a woman is in my house, I should know about it. Is that proper protocol? He said it's no big deal. Hmm. Well, it was no big deal because it probably was Tim's girl. But if you're married and you got a man cave and it's going to be a woman over there, you need to let your wife know. You do. You really need to let your wife know, man. You got to let your girl know that it's another woman in uh, on the premises because because this her castle but, but but for players who, they got to quit wearing this lipstick though for players just you, it's, it's gonna it's gonna catch up with you y'all gotta take this wipe all these lips when they come in let's get them down to bath because yeah. that lipstick yeah. gonna get you in some trouble i'm telling you or what you're gonna have to do fellas is you're gonna have to start using these solo cups and you gotta get the stuff in the trash <laughs> As soon as everybody out, man, you got yeah, to get glass. this in your trash, right? We here, need man. that red yeah. cup. Yeah, yeah. you need the red, red cup, cup where you can't see the lipstick on it. You got to get it. I'm telling you, man, it's just little things you can do. But, yes, you do have to let the girl know that it's a woman in the house. Now, it wasn't no big deal because it probably was Tim girl. I don't think you, man, that's stupid. But if you're going to bring your girl over to the game, I'm going to tell my wife, hey, baby, Tim's girl going to be down here watching the game. Is that cool with you? Come on. Matter of fact, yeah. why don't you come down and meet her? Why don't you yes, come so down and meet her, baby? Why don't you it's come down and watch the game? You know? mm-hmm. But if she says she can't come over here, you guys call Tim and just say, Tim, it's fellas only. Because mm-hmm. I've had my guys at my house, and I tell them, you know, whenever they come, hey, it's this fellas only. Mm-hmm. You ain't know I want to go see Steve's house and all this here. This, this, ain't, this ain't a tour. Me and only. I ain't doing that. I'm sorry. You're <laughs> you, not you doing what? Your, you can't bring your girl to my house and we you on the patio sure watching. Nah, that can't happen. Oh, if it's a yeah. guy's night. Yeah. Yeah. All my dudes is married. So, mm-hmm. hey. Okay. All right. We're moving on to uh, Mariah in Kalamazoo. Mariah says, uh, I'm in a relationship with a man that has a problem with me making more money than him. I can't suggest a restaurant or talk about shopping without him making a comment about me thinking that I'm all that. It's getting old, and I don't want an insecure man. Is there a way to make him feel better about this? That's a problem. Sometimes a male ego, you just can't overcome it. Um, I don't know what to tell you about this. There is no way to make him feel better about it if he doesn't feel good about it. All right, thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so 50 Cent has another well-executed TV series in the works. He he is a mogul now. I mean, 50's new show is called Hip Hop Homicide. It's going to take a deeper look into some of the most popular unsolved cold cases in the hip hop community. Uh, former TMZ personality, remember Van Lathan, who used to be on TMZ? Oh yeah, Van. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah, Van? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, uh-huh. got... yeah. That's from fine. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he's going to host Hip Hop Homicide, uh, so that's great news for him. He's back in the game. When asked about the new show, Fifty Cent commented, "Hip Hop loves things that are damaged. This series will shed light on the artist." that didn't make it through the struggle. So look out for that uh, coming soon. Hip Hop Homicide, hosted by Van Lathan. Yeah, we missed you, Van. I love it. 
A man back in the game. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Right. Now, did he? He's did a he? Right guy. Did he whoop somebody butt at TMZ? Yeah. What, what, I, yeah. I forgot what happened. I, I forgot what happened too. But yeah, he got into a fight, and they have like a zero tolerance. Uh, well, you know, fighting. I can promise you, man. Most people, you know, it was just an N word moment. That's all. We all have them. It's just an N word moment. Yeah, it got it got <laughs> violent. Uh, yeah, you right, T. I'm, it got we, violent. We've all we, had them. We just we, we just welcome the moment. That's right. We, that, that's it. <laughs> you never know when it might come. Woo. All right. So, uh, in case you're wondering uh, what's going on with the Wendy Williams show, well, here's the deal: Wendy won't return to her show for at least another six weeks. So, the good news in all of that is that she will return. She's been in seclusion since the end of last summer, and her staff has kept quiet about her medical condition. But there have been a lot, a lot of rumors out there about early onset dementia with Wendy, um, uh, her needing to uh, get helped dressed and and to eat all of this. Her production staff released a list of guest hosts for February to include the favorite Sherry Shepard. The viewers Sherry love Sherry good, Shepard. Man. Yeah, she's Sherry's doing, doing an good. outstanding good. She's doing an outstanding she's job. She really yes. is. Yeah. Also, um, Fat Joe and Remy Ma did a great job. They're coming back. Michael Rappaport and Terrence J. Terrence yeah. J. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know what? If they put Kim and Sherry together together, That'd I think great. that's a good comp because they girls. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, Kim was on there with um, Kim Whitney. Finesse. No, Kim yeah, Whitney Kim was Whitney on was there on with, with Finesse. 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 Yeah, Finesse. Yeah. Finesse. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, here's a story you guys have been waiting for: the a uh, forty, a four hundred and twenty-six million dollar lottery ticket was sold in Woodland <sighs> Hills, uh, Woodland Hills, California. This happened Friday night. This is according to a tweet from the California Lottery. Now, the winning ticket was sold at a Woodland Hills Chevron station, yes. gas station, and no one has claimed the $426 million so far. The unidentified winner can either choose to take a lump sum payout of about $293 million. Right there. Or, yeah. Right there. $293. Yeah. Got it. That's Solid. It. Thank you. One time mm-hmm. taxes paid and everything gone. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got 293 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's straightening it for me. Yeah, but you know what? Some people do like to get their entire winnings uh, of the four hundred and twenty-six. They're and, stupid. Yeah, that this means a, this you get is thirty. A, you get thirty payments over the next twenty-nine years. That's, that's stupid. There's a black person. You know that. There's a black person that won. They just I, I getting themselves together. Well, well, they I'm positioning. Sitting, I'm sitting, they positioning themselves. <laughs> that live out there in Woodland Hills. <laughs> yes, friend. I know the Chevron. We're off the one hundred and one. I got it. <laughs> that, mm-hmm. I went and got it. But you know what? It doesn't make any sense. You should take the lump sum. First of all, yeah. there's no guarantee you're going to live. That's right. 30 more years. 30 more years. So, yeah, 30 so wait, more whoa, whoa, whoa. Years. Somebody finna hold my money for 30 years? <laughs> Give me my damn money now. <laughs> <laughs> and let me get to blowing. I'm talking about <laughs> whoosh. Because I'm going to go through about 50 mil like you, like it wasn't even there. Mm-hmm. Woo! I'm talking about yeah. blow through. I'm going to make a couple mistakes. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing, boy. What are, what are you gonna um what what's the first thing you'll buy? Oh, I'm finna get a spaceship. I'm oh I'm finna go see some things. Bad. First thing I'm finna you buy just is people. Spent all your buy. money. Every dime yeah. of it, yeah. right? You don't even yeah. have no damn. You have no, 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 much, you have no idea what a spaceship costs. Yeah. A spaceship. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> buy me yes, a sir. damn what global. <laughs> what are you gonna buy, Steve? A global. A jet. A, uh, a jet. Uh, we don't, we don't Remember who that? you talking to, yeah, okay? We don't, we don't know, know none of that. We're I had to global. figure it out. A jet, yeah. A what global? about you, like Junior? What are you going to buy with yours? First thing. first thing I'm buying is people. That's the first thing I'm going to buy. People? I, people I, want, I want yes men around all the time. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'm buying people with my money. That's what I'm going to buy first off. Yeah. You want Does a bunch this look yes good? Men? Yes, and I'm dressed <laughs> like a clown. They're going to say yes <laughs> just to that. <laughs> Now my first purchase though, Shirley. That's what I'm asking. Your first yeah. is 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 Halle Berry. I'm finna buy her for, <laughs> forever. You can't, forever. Yeah. You can't buy yeah. Halle. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes, you Probably. can. Yep, yes, probably you won't get it for two ninety four. Once no. again, all your money gone again. Again, your your, your stupid decisions <laughs> you is coming. Think. Your stupid decisions back is coming in in yes. flurries. <laughs> be broke. Spaceship and Halle broke. broke. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Once again. You're going to be broke. You can't yeah. even wine and dine, no, Hallie. Fine. Take care of Hallie. If you buy I, want I ain't got no spaceship gas. I want to be standing there dressed as Prince. And somebody say, I like it. <laughs> 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 well, it looked good on Prince. <laughs> no, damn <laughs> <laughs> talking about the purple motorcycle and everything. I like it. No, no, no. Please tell me when you win this kind of money, we can't look up five, ten years later and they broke though. It, no. Trust, please tell me that can't happen. That has happened, but please don't yeah. let it happen. Yeah. Get a financial well, planner or something. Two hundred ninety-four million. You, you, you. I can promise you, I ain't gonna be broke. And uh, <laughs> it straightened out so much. All right. (laughs) Do it really? (laughs) Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, (laughs) Spaceship Tommy has a question (laughs) right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. So the nephew has a question for everybody. What is this nephew? I'm getting ready to go to Hollywood and finna pitch. I'm about to pitch three shows. Okay. So y'all tell me which one y'all like. For me to pitch. Now, this ain't family feud. This family fights. Okay? Uh-huh. So that means like two families who got an issue with each other, and, you know, they come on my show, they discuss the problem and how it all started. I weigh in on my comments. You understand what I'm saying? And then right after that, for 10 minutes, we let both families in the middle of the flow and whoop each other ass right there. <laughs> this ain't family feud. This family fights. Okay? Now, that's one. That's one I show like right that. there. I like that. You like that, Junior? That's one. Yeah, I like now, that. Uh-huh. The, here, here, go the, here go the second. The mm-hmm. second show is, now th- this ain't copycat. I'm just letting you know. Let Tommy be the judge of that. Okay, that's the name of the show. Let Tommy be well, the judge like of that. Now. Okay, now this this, 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 the, now this, this, like this, this is the show where, uh, uh, like two dope dealers working on the same block, you know, and they can't they can't get it together. So I come out and I judge on who should be on the corner and who shouldn't be on the corner. You see what I'm saying? Let Tommy. Be the judge of that. Like two food trucks in the same area, they selling the same stuff. You see what I'm saying? They they fighting over who gonna work, who ain't gonna work. Let Tommy be the judge of that. Now that's the second show. I think that'll work right there. I think Hollywood gonna love it. Now here go the third one. The third one is called Slapstick. Slapstick. All right. This is where we go to your job, your church, family function, a sports function. All right. And whoever is on, whoever then ticked you off. We go up and slap the living hell out of them right then and right there. You know what I'm saying? So some, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a teacher, a teacher got a problem at her job. We come on her job. Another teacher that got on her nerve. We come up and just slap the daylights out their teeth. That's slapstick. So I'm going to Hollywood. Y'all let me know which one Can you I like. You, you like question. family fights? Can I ask you a question? That time it, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, no. What what day have you set this pitch meeting up? Just tell uh, me let's day. see now. I'm, I'm supposed to talk to NBC. Um, second week in February, I'm talking to NBC. Not, I'm talking to NBC, and then I'm also talking to uh, uh, um, Netflix. Netflix really is interested in slapstick. People, somebody getting the hell slapped out of. They yeah. loving that right there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Go ahead. Right after the meeting, you'll be getting your ass on the plane <laughs> coming back. Right after sit the meeting. And, and sit down with us. <laughs> you'll be all right. So you be all, you don't, all right. Uh, Hey, Let Tommy be the judge of that. You don't see that. Now one of them. You don't. You don't think that. They, you don't think they recognize what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Family fight. You're not feeling that one. Family and, fight. And and let Tommy be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> the only yeah. original okay. idea was you know you've influenced him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right right. after them first two shows, one of the questions going to be. So how's Steve? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, the question is, how long can you go without washing, okay, without a bath? We'll be back to talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here's a question for you guys. Not for you personally, but just we're just throwing it out there, okay? How often should a person bathe, okay? (laughs) Should they bathe? Should they bathe daily? You need you need Every, to just, we, let's just, hey, just, just stop right here. <laughs> you need to do this daily. Now go ahead. What's, what's your other options? <laughs> go ahead. What's the other option? Should, should they bathe daily? Should they bathe every other day? Every right. other day. Every other day. Yeah. All right. That's pretty At least got to get that in every other day. 
You All right, this is really nasty, but I have to read this story because um, this is where it came from. Mm. 80, an 87-year-old man in Iran left doctors stunned when he was shown to be in perfect health despite having not bathed at all, at all, since 1955. God! Speaking of marinating, all right, <laughs> letting that marinate. Okay, his name is Amu Haji. Uh, no, he's known funky. as <laughs> or Big Funky. <laughs> Big Funky. <laughs> Yeah, okay. What you trying to tell me his name is? His I name like is Big, Big Funky. Funky. Well, it is Big Funky, but in Arabic, yeah. it's uh, Amik Amu. Um, Amu <laughs> Haji. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is in Arabic. But if you translate, or some that. people call him the world's dirtiest man. He's been homeless his entire life. Not only has he not bathed or showered since about 1955, like I said. I mean, at one point, really, (laughs) like, listen, after the second week, it's really no need at this point, (laughs) yeah, because really, you, there's, you can, you can top out, you can top out, you just, (laughs) you can funk out, (laughs) yeah, it's just a certain level to the point where now it's like, mm, Mm -hmm. mm, that's bad. Did you hear what he eats though? This is really disgusting. He eats roadkill, drinks dirty water. He smokes dried. He smokes dried animal feces in a pipe, what? and this is why he doesn't bathe. Okay, so there's there's logic to this madness. He says he well, doesn't I, I bathe because. I already know why he don't bathe. Why? What? Why do you? I bathe? already know why he don't bathe. Cause who? Who? Who house? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. no. He says he he says that he believes soap will make him sick. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I'm that's true. It. No, 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 no. Thesis is what's no that's make. true. If he gets soap on him, his ass gonna immediately disintegrate. <laughs> yeah. But doctors ran a bunch of tests on him and incredibly found no disease carrying bacteria or parasites on his body. The only he expl- smoked it all. The only explanation doctors can come up with is that his lifestyle has resulted in a very, very strong immune system. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. As a sick person on this show, let me just tell you right now, this is nonsense. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah. I'm sick, and I know I've bathed anyway. Okay? I, there's no way in the world you can tell me soap don't help. It's the best thing I got. I'm, I'm gonna already tell you right sick. Now, I, live, I live with Marjorie. Thank you. And uh, like, and sometimes I just been. I, mean, I'm, I don't know anybody that takes more baths than this. No one. I just don't. I bet y'all do. I bet y'all do. <laughs> you know, watch, watch him finna say himself with his three damn showers. Yeah, three showers a day. His three. A day. I ain't lying to you. His three. <laughs> he don't believe it. I'm not living with. I'm not living with no man to take three showers a day. We're not even gonna be friends. He's over Say, man, finna go. Wait a minute, you finna do what, though? Yeah. He's over clean, Steve. <laughs> hey, uh, you watching the game, and, your, and then Tommy just get up and go get in the shower. Hey, <laughs> half time. <laughs> hey, dog, hey, dog, we finna go. You finna do what, though? <laughs> dog, dog, didn't you just take a shower? No, no, our friendship won't even last, dog. <laughs> I can promise you you don't bathe more than my wife. There's no way. There's no way. You got to go to work. I don't even see how you could say yeah, that that's true, and have Steve. a damn career. I don't uh-huh. know what, what are you talking about. How? You can't be on ready to love More and bathe. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No, you got a radio show. You on tour and ready for love. You got time to take three baths a day. And he's get a husband and a father. Out of here. Man, get your ass out of here. Who the hell you time? think you're running this by? But ain't, ain't right, anybody listening to Coming up next, <laughs> the bather, the nephew with the prank phone call for today. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up about four minutes after the hour, it is my strawberry letter for today. The subject, get this, guys, one husband, three men. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, Is this a math problem we doing? (laughs) Yeah, that don't add up. One husband, three men. We'll get into it in just a little bit. But right now, it is time for the nephew and the prank phone call for today. What you got for us, Neff? I'm going to be a little stupid, you know, going on, take this thing up a notch. That is not an announcement. 
Why do you keep doing that? We already know that. But I'm going to get it at about a seven. I'm going to take it up to about a seven. Hey, do us a favor. You know, man. stop announcing it. Yeah, it's like it's okay. a surprise. Yeah, right. just stop announcing right. it just with the, okay. the stupidity. Do you got to announce it? We already okay. know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but 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 uh, here's the problem I got. He said I'm gonna be a little stupid. I'm gonna be about a seven. That's kind of high. That's really high. We know. Stupid, stupid <laughs> at a two is plenty. Yes, yes. Man. come down a few notches. <laughs> be a little stupid. I'll be about. A I'm just you know when I when I man. when I magnify my stupidity. Mm. Mm. Okay. When, okay. Yeah. Now watch okay. this here. Yeah. Title of this prank is I got papers on that man. I got papers on that man. Cat dog, if you would. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach uh uh is this Phyllis? Yes it is. Who am I speaking to? Hi, right, Phyllis. This is this is John down at the job. I work out here with Clem, your husband, Clem. Clem. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. How are you? I'm good. He slipped and fell today. What? And uh, he hurt himself. Uh, uh, he got leaves a little shaken up here at the job. So what happened? What do you what do you, what happened? Well, I I think he he he, he definitely pulled something in his back. But, okay. Uh, we um now, now who are you now? I'm his wife. I'm I'm his wife Phyllis. You're 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 Phyllis. That's right. That's correct. Okay, because we got listed that his wife is Janice, and we tried to call her earlier, but we didn't get yes, an answer. I'm his wife. So I'm his wife. I don't know who, who Janice. Who the hell is Janice? Janice is who he has listed for a contact when he, when uh. When it's emergency contact or something should happen. No, y'all must, you know, y'all got that mixed up. Y'all must have mixed that up somehow. He wouldn't have put no, no damn Janice as his wife. I'm his wife. Feel it. So I don't know who, who messed up, but that ain't right. I'm the wife. Okay, well, it has her listed as the wife and call her as a, as a contact if something goes wrong. Well, I don't know what to tell you because I'm his wife. Now, I don't, I don't know who messed up. Hold, hold, yeah, on, hold, hold on one second. Let me let me click over one second. Another call coming. Yeah. Just give me one second. That's some Janice on the doggone. What's this? Okay, that was Janice. What? She said she'll, she's going to come out to the job, so you don't have to no, worry about coming to get it. No, hold up. No, I'm coming out to the job. I'm his wife. I don't know who no Janice is, but y'all need to get it straight because I'm his well, wife. Well, she said so she's going to she's gonna, she's, she said she's gonna come and take him to the doctor. No, she ain't taking so him nowhere, sir. I'm his wife. I'm taking him. No, you don't let you don't lease my husband to no body. I'm his freaking wife. So y'all need well, to straighten y'all uh, out. The, Janice says she'll be right here in 10 minutes, well, ma'am. I get right. I bet y'all be there in 10 minutes, too, and I bet y'all better not release my husband to nobody. I'm his wife. I don't know who no Janice is, but y'all need to get that straight. I'm on my what way. You, you tell Janice if she beat me there, to so hold up, sister. Produce some, some oh. marriage certificate papers or something. To tell her to produce that. I got the papers on that man. Okay, well, I'm just saying... uh. Janice is, she, he does have her on the list, ma'am, so I can not I don't release. give a what he has on the list, sir. I don't give a what's on the list. Well, why, why would she have her name man. on the list, ma'am? Why would her name be above your name on the list? You know what? I'm not going to play this little ring around the rosy with you. I got papers on that man, so you better be, best, y'all best hold up until I get there in case y'all want some more problems. I'm going to release him to Janice as soon as she gets you? here. You? Sir, you better not release my husband and no body. All y'all must be laid out on the floor. So I'm going to tell you right now, if my husband ain't there, when I get there, it's going to be some full-blown going down. So you best just wait till I get there. This is a bunch of bull but it's going to end when I get there. I'm all on her way. I got to hang up with you. I ain't got time to play with you either. So I'm on my way because she going to answer for this. Janice might get a beat down and your ass going to get the business if my husband ain't there. Oh, oh, you hear oh, me? Oh. You heard? I, I hear you. I hear you, I'm ma'am. I, don't have to... I ain't got time to be going back and forth with you playing ring around the world. I'm a grown-ass woman. I got you to go. I seem like I got some business to take care of over there. 
Okay, well, well, what am I supposed to do with Janice? Like I said, you tell that to hold the up. I'm on my way. She's trying to represent like she me. That trying to be me. Okay, then what do you want me to tell her? That she ain't wife. It might be okay, what do you want me to... material. What, what, do you, what do you want me to tell Tommy? Who Tommy? I don't even know no Tommy. Who Tommy? That's me, baby. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your husband, oh. Clement, got me the prank phone call to you. Oh. <laughs> okay, y'all are full of shit, okay? Y'all are full of shit. I'm going to kick all of y'all. Hold on. You, nephew Tommy, you stay your ass over there. I ain't got time to be playing with y'all like this. I'm trying, I'm trying to get my work done. I'm going to kick all y'all asses. <laughs> hey, I got one more thing to ask you, baby. What's the what? baddest radio? What's the baddest radio show in the land? <laughs> the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> but wait, yes, yes, we yes, didn't yes, have yes, anything yeah. to do with this foolishness. <laughs> Talk about a sin. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey. You know it's hard out here for a prankster. You know what I'm saying? It's hard out here for a prankster, baby. <laughs> Got to take it like it is. Some of y'all got to understand the repercussions of this here. So, you know, sometimes y'all going to be entangled in what time it do. So, some, you know, y'all that's on the show, you know, you might get your butt whooped every uh-uh. now. Yeah, I'm going to get my butt whooped what you this. said. No. <laughs> I've never heard anybody say that they was looking for us. Ain't nobody never warned uh-huh. us after the prank. That's very specific as to who going to mess around one day. Mm. And it's going to pop off on them. It's very clear in all of the people that's talk. Everybody has mentioned only your name. <laughs> Nobody, Nobody's ever said anything about coming back on anybody on the show and all like this here. Mm, no. mm. Uh-uh. Well, I, I see who ain't with me. Y'all ain't willing to go Man, down I'll with me. I'll take no whooping for you. Man, <laughs> Man I wish oh, I would no. be out somewhere somebody swang on me because of you. <laughs> February 10th, 11th, and 12th. <laughs> February 10th, 11th, and 12th. The nephew coming to Huntsville, Alabama, baby. Stand up live, comedy club. That's right. Thursday, I got a show. Two on Friday, two on Saturday. That is Valentine's weekend, and it is also Super Bowl weekend. That's right. Friday. That's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll watch the game on Sunday, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That is Huntsville, Alabama. February 10th through the 12th. Stand up live, comedy club. Land in the cut. Baltimore, Maryland, here I come. The nephew is there. Baltimore Comedy Factory, February 18th through the 20th. That's the 18th through the 20th. The nephew is there. February 26th, St. Louis, Missouri, Sheldon Theater. Two shows in one night. The nephew is in town. St. Louis. The list goes on and on. Go to thomasmiles.com. You can see exactly where the nephew will be. All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letters. Subject, one husband, three men. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com by clicking Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. You never know. It could be yours. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject, One husband, three men. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for 12 years, and I have cheated on my husband for the past five years. My husband is a bit older than I am, and he can't always satisfy me like he used to, so I got addicted to stepping out on him. The thrill of the affair is what excited me at first, but then when I realized my husband no longer cared, it became part of my lifestyle. I just turned 45, And I think I am going through a midlife crisis because one man isn't enough. And I like them young. I am not sleeping around, though. I have two consistent men on the side that I have sex with. I didn't want any parts of an older man anymore. So one of my side men is 35 and the other one is 29. And he is my hairstylist. The 35-year-old just got married and his wife is bipolar and won't take her medicine So he wasn't getting any sex at home. The 29-year-old is my baby, and he's very special because I have taught him a lot. 
I taught him how to save money, decorate his place, and how to properly make love to a grown woman. He is the one that is falling for me, and I am very fond of him. But if I got divorced, he wouldn't be my first choice. The 35-year-old would. So I thought I would shake things up and tell my husband I'm not happy and we might need to get a divorce. He said he's no fool and can tell I'm getting sex elsewhere, so he'd like for me to just be respectful if I'm going to do it and not let anyone else know what's going on. That made me suspect. That made me suspect, and now I'm thinking he might be messing around on me. I asked him a million times if he's cheating, and he had a smirk on his face and said no. What if he lied about having ED and he has a mistress? Should I confess to see if he will? Please advise. I, what, what do you want us to advise you on, really? I, I, I really don't think you want an answer. I don't think you care. I, I just think you're enjoying your cheating life uh, so much right now. You haven't cared about your husband or what he's doing for the last five years. What's changed? Uh, the fact that he might be cheating, too? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fact that he didn't give you any problem, any any clap back when you said you might want a divorce, well, isn't that interesting? Um, I, I think my honest opinion is that you don't give a darn one way or the other. Uh, you tried to test the waters on divorce, as you say, and found out that your husband is <laughs> like, cool, <laughs> just be respectful, <laughs> not a problem. Uh, who does that anyway, P- play with divorce like that? I mean, you've been cheating on him with not one but two men, but you say you're not sleeping around. How could you even put that line in this letter? You're not sleeping around. That's exactly what you're doing. What do you think sleeping around is? It's not okay, and uh, what you're doing is trifling, and now you're feeling some kind of way because your husband didn't put up a fight. Uh, you need to divorce him because you don't love him. And you said in the letter you're addicted to the thrill of an affair and all of that, and uh, your husband doesn't excite you anymore. What are you holding on for? I just think you should go ahead, put each other out of your misery. That way you can cheat freely, and maybe your husband can be happy with someone else because it's certainly not you. Steve? Uh, Again, uh, we're at one of these letters. The subject is one husband, three men. Uh, we're, we're at this letter where I really, and I could tell by Shirley's response, and I'm just going to speak freely for Shirley, we really don't give a damn. We don't. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Couldn't have said it better. About myself. you, your problem, this letter, the outcome, what you want us to tell. Like Shirley said, what do you want us to tell you? What? You, you're just so full of. You've been married 12 years. You cheated on your husband the past five. Mm. Already, don't nobody like you that's listening to the show right now. So let's just be clear about that. My husband is a bit older than I am, and he can't always satisfy me like he used to. So I got addicted to stepping out on him. This women sitting up here going, trick, sit your behind down some damn well. But, oh, no, the thrill of the fast what excited me at first. But then I realized my husband no longer cared. It became a part of my lifestyle. I just turned 45, and you think I'm going through a midlife crisis because one man isn't enough, and I like him young. I'm not sleeping around, though. I have two consistent men on the side that I have sex with. <laughs> She didn't even read her own letter up. Yeah. (laughs) Shirley said when she responded to this, how could you even put this in the same sentence? (laughs) I have two men, (laughs) consistent men on the side that I have sex with. Mm -hmm. I'm not sleeping around. (laughs) Well, I'm so confused now because... See, it's going to be hard for us to help you because you don't you don't think there's a problem. You just said you're not sleeping around, but you have three men. Mm -hmm. And you're having consistent sex with two of them. And if your husband could perform you, that would be three. But you say you're not sleeping around. Well, what is you doing? What is it? 
it? What what is this? What what's what's happening? You know, y'all have redefined everything. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> we'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Uh, today's Strawberry Letter subject, one husband, three men. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's beautiful Strawberry Letter and uh, finish up with your response. The subject, my husband, th- one husband, three men. Mm. Don't nobody give a damn about this lady in this letter. She's been married 12 years, been cheating on her husband for five of the years because he's older than her and he can't satisfy her like he used to. At the end of the letter, she says is that uh, he's, has he lied about having ED, erectile dysfunction. So you got addicted to stepping out on him. The thrill of the affair is what excited you, and you made it a part of your lifestyle when you find out your husband didn't care. I turned 45, and I think I'm going through a midlife crisis because one man isn't enough, and I like him young. I'm not sleeping around, though. I have two consistent men on the side that I have sex with. But you're not sleeping around. What is, what is this? What <laughs> is this? You know, I'm sick of y'all new people. Always redefining something. What y'all doing now? <laughs> You got a husband, you got two consistent men, one 35, 39, the other one 29, and you had consistent sex with them, but you're not sleeping around. <laughs> is this is this called an entanglement? Is that what this <laughs> <No>. is? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to understand what it why. is, because y'all keep redefining stuff that's been the same for a long time. Y'all stupid. And I'm sick of this stupid ass letter. I don't want any parts of an older man anymore. So one of my side men is 35 and the other one is 29 and he's my hairstylist. The 35 year old just got married and his wife is bipolar and won't take her medicine. So he wasn't getting any sex at home. Well, what he just married for? She ain't just become bipolar. Hmm. So now what he married for? And now he telling you she won't take a mad so they ain't having sex. What? And they just got married. Lady, you, are you kidding me? You got to be stupid. So now, and then the 29-year-old is my baby. And he's very special because (laughs) I've taught him a lot. I've taught him how to save money, decorate his place, and how to properly make love to a grown woman. He's the one uh, falling for me. And I'm very fond of him. But if I got divorced, he wouldn't be my first choice. The 35 year old would. Mm. All right, let what? me let me let me walk this back for you. I'm trying to make some sense out of this. It's your old <laughs> ass. You 45. Don't neither one of them men want you. The 29 year old is falling for you because you can do some things and teach him some things. But soon as he get good at how to make love and take care of an older woman, and once he get his house decorated. And he going to go get him a young chick to put in there. And it ain't finna be you. The 35-year-old not finna leave his bipolar-ass wife because she ain't bipolar. They just got married. And they having sex, unlike you think. Ain't neither one of them won't shoot. And don't you know that both of them know you married? So now, I've never met a guy that, took a married woman that he was the side piece of. I haven't met him yet and made her his wife. I haven't (laughs) met him. I'm sure they're out there and there are some stories, but Tommy, have you met one of your boys that's done this one yet? Not at all. Junior, you know any of your partners that pulled this off? No, sir. I got a lot of homies, man. I'm 65. I know a lot of dudes, man. I don't know no dude that done done this, though. I don't know who you think you are, but ain't no, I don't know no dude done pulled this move off. No. No, sir. So I thought I would shake things up and tell my husband I'm not happy and we might need to get a divorce. Mm. He said he's no fool and can tell you that you're getting sex elsewhere, so he'd just like for you to be respectful if I'm going to do it and not let anybody know what's going on. That made me suspect, and now I think he might be messing around on me. And if he is, so what? 
<laughs> you got two other men that you're consistently having sex with that you say you're not sleeping around. So I don't even understand what the suspicion is about. I've asked him a million times if he's cheating, and he had a smirk on his face and said no. Now, here's how stupid you are, which makes the letter super stupid. What if he lied about having ED mm. and has a mistress? Mm. Mm. Should I confess to see if he will? Whoo, you stupid. <laughs> Whoo, you so stupid. Lady, a lot of stupid stuff in this letter, but it ain't finna be that one, though. I can tell you that right now. Right. Ain't no way. <laughs> He finna confess. <laughs> Fool, admit to something that he's not even been busted or accused of? Come Girl, on. Girl, stop. Now that's stupid. Okay. Girl, stop. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Hit us up on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM. Uh, to comment on today's Strawberry Letter, you can also check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up next, it is Sports Talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we go. It is time for Sports Talk with Junior. What you got, Junior? Ooh, Come on, fellas. Got? It's set. The Super oh Bowl God. is set, man. Girl. What a championship Sunday we did had. Woo. My gosh. I want to say congratulations to the Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bengals first, man. Did you believe this, Unc? Man, congratulations to my boys down in Cincinnati. Ricky Spade Curry. Spade, I gave him the name Spade in 74. Got in two fights about it. Told me not to call him that in front of no girl. As soon as they walked up, I called his ass Spade again. Uh, it stuck. He's a legendary Q. Uh, also, uh, Marvelous Marvin Horton. Greatest yeah. pledge I ever saw. And also, uh, Leon uh, from the uh, Dirty Four. My sands. Uh Brutus and all them boys in Southern Ohio. Congratulations, Cincinnati Bengals. Did we was texting through the whole game? Yeah, the whole game. The comments was hysterical. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> to the damn Bengals, boy. Oh, one of them Ohio teams got in. Man, in overtime, twenty-seven was, to twenty-four over the Chiefs. Man, I, I could believe. I was pulling like for Kansas game. City, man. I was pulling for my homes. God, I can't believe even Dave showed up at work today. I thought Dave would be somewhere. We had to have a yeah. something. Just go well, get Dave him. Well, Dave would be all right. I'm from Cleveland. I don't feel nothing for Dave this morning. I don't even know. <laughs> he can't. At least he was in it. I, ain't, I don't give a damn how Dave feel today. Nah, 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 nah yeah. if you ask me. And I'd like yeah. to say congratulations to them natty boys again. I was pulling for them. And also, mm-hmm. in the first half, mm-hmm. on the text feed, I predicted Cincinnati by three on a game-ending field goal. Man. Wow. And I want to say congratulations to the Los Angeles Rams as they beat the 49ers 20-17. They will be playing at home in their stadium for the second mm-hmm. time in NFL history. The home team will be playing in their own stadium. Woo-hoo! Boy, that was a game. That was a game. Well, Boy, that yeah. was a game. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, Junior. Thank you. Coming up next, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at the top of the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, so now you have a question for Steve. What is your question? Yeah, yeah you know, Unc, um, let me ask you something, Unc. And I, I mean, mm-hmm. and this is about your nephew, and I really want to just get this out of the way because I heard some earlier in the show today. I just want to know, how is this popping up? Tommy just said he bathed. Three times a day. Because we had the story yeah. with the man from 1955. Right. He is invaded. a very clean person. He okay. Is. All right. And he's But a you made a statement. Yeah, you mm-hmm. made a statement too, Unc. Yeah. You can't be friends with somebody that bathes three times a day. No. Could, could, could you explain why that's well, not possible? Well, see, first of all, it's going to interfere with our friendship. Me being you know, clean? Well, <laughs> the fact that you got to bathe three times a day... Me and my partners, we do stuff like spare the moment. Okay. Hey, man, we finna go down here. Y'all want to just meet up down here? Yeah, we do stuff like that. Hey, but hmm. We got to wait on you to bathe. <laughs> see, we're not, we not, see, see, we, see, we not finna keep calling you. Because you got to bathe three times a day. You got to work that in between your radio show, your TV show, yeah. your touring career, 
Yeah. You a father and a husband. Uh-huh. Right. You going to Jordan's games and all this here. Clean, though. Uh, you know, why? And three three baths is not, it's not even necessary. It's really not, dog. It's <laughs> really, really not. And for you to sit up in this TV, on this radio show, and tell people that's what you do three times a day, I find Why would I show difficult. up in my son's game funky as hell? Why would I do that? Why wouldn't I take a bath? But so see, I... unless you have a gland problem, Which he don't. from the time you shower at 5 in the morning and you need another one at 11 because <laughs> you've been up sitting up talking on the radio... Then you got you need to go to the doctor, man, and get that problem. You need to you need to some the seal doctor. or something. You, hey dog, hey hey dog, here what you need to do. You need to stop using deodorant and start using Thompson's deck sealer. You need to start you need to start putting primer and sealer on your funky ass. If you stink from just doing this radio show, you got the deodorant ain't what you need, dog. And I'm telling you, that Home Depot got it, Lowe's got it, Bears got it out now. But Thompson, did you say Thompson's water sealer? Thompson water sealer for Dex is what you need. Let's go down the timeline here. Uh-huh. So, what time of the day do you ta- are you taking all these showers? Because I think that's okay. Important. So, in the morning when you wake up. Yeah. Before we do the show, Before I take work. a shower. Yeah. It, it helps yeah. you wake you up anyway. Yeah, right? absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, when I get through, I, I come get through. straight uh, in here. Go ahead. Okay. So now, so. <laughs> shower afterwards. You no time for that, man. I'm running it's late. Because early. You shower man, afterwards. I wish the hell I would. I'd take a bath at I'm night. so That's glad we're not in the same room, because I, I would be able to take all that. You just, just, you just in there. See, what I don't like is, I don't like. All day, like I don't like you smelling like all day. That that bothers me right there. What? You all day? You ain't bathed all day? You, and, and hey, you, dog. You... I'm not laying around next to your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I'm across <laughs> this big ass platform. We doing a radio show. <laughs> okay, okay. Over there with a pillow, laying my face right next to your ass. I probably want you to. Do a little bit more, but what, what is, I'm, I'm across this desk. <laughs> and is you glad we zooming now? You know how many times I done came to work in that radio show and didn't take no bath before I came in there, man? You never had no problem out of me. Okay, so hang on, hang on. Bath in the morning, okay, surely. So I go to the gym when I leave the gym, another okay. shower, okay? Now, later on in the evening before you go to bed, I, I want me a bath. I want another shower. Okay, so That's you're three. working out. He don't yeah. work out, out every so day. He don't work out every day, Shirley. We need to no, stop this day. lie. <laughs> he don't work out every day, Shirley. You a funky uncle. That's what you is. You's a funky uncle. <laughs> we gotta go. We'll Man. be back. <laughs> we'll be back with more you need of, to this, wash. of this ignorant show. <laughs> 20 minutes after, right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In a recent food and relationship poll, the majority of Americans say that making a good meal for their partner in the kitchen is is more intimate to them than having sex. 80% believe good food is the most surefire way to someone's heart. And 43% said they've ended relationships because their partner was a bad cook. Well, my question is who they polling? (laughs) <laughs> this is a food and that. relationship poll. Majority of Americans, all right? No, no. They well, asked us. I can't be with nobody that can't cook. Uh-huh. Because one thing we're going to have to do is eat. Yeah. That Contrary to, to what you guys think, I do cook. No, no. We said can cook. <laughs> I can. <laughs> no, no. Surely, can means the ability to cook flavorful <laughs> and delicious yeah. dishes. The fact that you can go in there and turn on appliances and 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 yeah, heat grease and melt butter just don't really boil water. It don't mean no how well, like, that don't that don't qualify. I Didn't you boil a turkey loves, one time? Did you did you boil eggs. a turkey? No, I didn't boil a oh, turkey. Whoa, 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 this is gonna be good. He loves what? He likes eggs. He loves I love eggs, eggs and pancakes. I lo- eggs is one of my favorite dishes. In the yeah, morning. He loves eggs. I, eggs, I can eat an egg any time of the day. I don't like eggs. 
they like told that. me that. So I'm to the doctor. He said you're gonna have to stay off dairy. I said okay, cool. That's no problem. He said eggs. I said, no. Mom, that's not gonna happen, sir. <laughs> I said I'm not. I'm not giving up egg. And egg is not dairy. Eggs is poultry. All right. Coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll do a round of Would You Rather with the guys right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time for a round of Would You Rather. Here we go. Would you rather watch Jimmy Walker's commercial for 48 hours, his brand new commercial, the insurance B. commercial? B. <laughs> Money. B. Money. Or... Would you rather watch paint dry on a house for three days? I'm going to sit there and look at it. B. I'm going to watch this paint. You're going to watch the paint dry. You don't want to watch Jimmy Walker's commercial? No. I'm going to watch this paint dry because at least I can think about some other stuff. Uh, While you're doing it. That commercial is painful. It's painful. Yeah, it is. Dynamite. (laughs) Now. I thought he didn't like to say dynamite no more. I thought he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I, he doesn't. Did he say it in the commercial? I don't even remember. Yeah, he said. Right, yeah. Here we go. Would you rather give up sex for ninety days, B. or give up talking for ninety days? B. You as long as we doing it days? and ain't talking, that's even better. <laughs> no, I'm gonna give up I, sex for ninety days. Yeah, because you gotta what? talk. You gotta work. No, dog, I can't. You, know, you don't even understand what can go wrong in my life if I can't talk. Boy, uh-uh. <laughs> it whole lot can go wrong, dog. But, Steve, that's three whole months. Of no sex? Uh-huh. That's a lot. You, that's oh, a lot. Let, let me explain something to y'all. See, I have i haven't talked to a human being for two weeks before. When I was homeless one time, I remember going a two-week period without talking to a person. Mm-hmm. And um, that, that, ain't, that ain't good, man. Two weeks without talking. Do you know what that is socially, mentally? Y'all don't understand how, how necessary talking is. 90 days without talking? Bruh, do you know the uh, stuff that go go wrong in your life? And you can't 90 talk? 90 days with no sex, though. That's unbelievable. That's unbearable. Yeah, Who would well, do that? Better get somewhere by yourself and work through some things. <laughs> no sex is no sex. Period. <laughs> even even by yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> I tell you what, just, you got you got. I'm, I'm, you, I cannot go ninety days without talking. Mm. You mm-hmm. cannot do that, dog. Trust right. and believe, man. Especially well, can I talk to me? Lunch. Can I at least you talk? Can't to talk. Me? No talking is no That's talking. That's worse. That's why your ass is in the trouble you in now, right? <laughs> by your stupid ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Would you, would you rather retire now and get $50 million? Or would you rather work 10 more years and get $1 billion? Give me the 10 and I'm, a billion, I'm out of here. baby. I'm yeah. out of here. That's no, no. easy. 10 and a billion? Y'all don't understand. That's 100 million a year. Yeah. What is y'all talking about? To work? But I'm finna get that 50. How soon am I gonna get that 50? I ain't got 50? neither. All right, all right. 50 million <laughs> and you out now. Mm-hmm. Or 10 years and you get a billion. Oh, I'm going to take that fit right now. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is debatable. All right. Coming up, our last break of the day. And, of course, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Here we are, guys. Our last break of the day on this Monday. It's been a good Monday. Man. Had some fun. <laughs> yeah. It was great for me. This crazy show. <laughs> yeah, mm. all this bathing. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, can't believe man. that. All right. So, Steve, the guys asked you a question. I want to ask you a question uh, from a male mm-hmm. perspective that has to do with women because you're so okay. good in this area. Okay. This is from a man's perspective. Here's my question What is the best way? For a woman to attract a man. Simple question, but I just want to know, should we snatch our waist, get bigger body parts like a lot of women do, wear a lot of makeup? I I mean, what is it, you know? Well, you Um, know, if you look, a lot of that isn't working. If that's what they want to do, yeah. Well, but I'm saying if you look at Instagram, a lot of it isn't working. Mm -hmm. They done snatched their waist. They done got... 
hair down to their ass. They done, they done got the boobs. They done got the booties. They done, they done got all that. But they still on Instagram advertising it. They still ain't got no families. They still ain't got no, no man of their dreams. They still posting their own self. It's not working. It's the look of today. But the ultimate, the ultimate way for a woman to attract a man is to, first of all, you got to stop the emphasis of trying to attract a man. Because if all you're trying to do is attract a man, then go on and get yourself that pony hair down to your ass. Go on and get your booty put on. Get you some butt pads. Put it in your drawers. You know, get you some uh, some of them suits that they put on the just skin tight suits and put some heels on, and get That's you some nice. lashes. And you and you and you've attracted a man. The goal has to be changed, mm-hmm. and the pers- per- perceptive has to be changed to produce a different outcome. So what a woman is really trying to do, you're trying to attract the man that's for you. Mm-hmm. The only way to attract the best man for you is to be the best woman for you. That's how you attract a man. I'm telling you right now, a man is looking for a woman who has the ability to care for him and what he is about and what his life is about. But we can only recognize that if we see you caring about yourself and your life and what you're about. And we want that that you possess for yourself to be applied to us. That's really the deal, man. So like if you're a woman and you're being the best woman you can be for you, you've done the best you can do with your career you've done the best you can do with your education not that that's necessary i'm just saying whatever it is you've done the best you do the best you can with your appearance you do the best you can raising your kids you be the best person you can you live in your best life at your church or your mosque or your synagogue or wherever you worship if you're being the best in those areas of your life the law of attraction is real you will attract the best man that's attracted to that life. If you just want a man to look at you and go, oh, goo, goo, ga, ga, wow, wow, look at her, get your ass some four-inch heels, get your ass some hair, some lashes, get you a makeup artist, and get you one of them suits that's body tight, and put it on and take some pictures and get you a bag and post it on Instagram and watch the likes and the comments come in and people slide in your DMs. Women do that all the time, and they got men sliding in their DMs all the time. Ain't none of them coming up with jackpot because they've forgotten how it really works. But what women don't understand is men ain't forgot how it really works because when we are looking for the one, we still want to be able to take you and introduce you to our mama. That's, That's still important to a guy. When a guy done got serious and trying to buckle it down, man, I got to introduce her to my mama. Do you know how many old women have said he's never brought a girl to this house before? He's never brought a young lady over to this house before. You're the first woman, I, girl I've seen at this house for some holidays. See, now you own to something because he's looking for something. That's my best suggestion for women. To get, and I know it sounds corny, but you've got to be the best version of yourself so you can attract the best version to yourself. Because when a man is looking to settle down, he wants what you do for yourself to be able to come over here and do this for me. That's the key. When you see women who can't ever get nobody, ain't ever with nobody, it's two things. Number one, maybe they don't want to be with nobody. There are women who enjoy being alone. There's women where it's not marriage is not their aim. Being in a long, committed relationship is not their aim. There are people out there who exist like that. I'm not saying that's good or bad. That's they call. But if you want somebody, you have to behave as though you have somebody. And to get somebody, you can't be seen with everybody. Did you hear that? To get somebody, you can't be seen with everybody. 
Come on, boy. Because you get what you, you attract what you get. So if you act like you are somebody and you have somebody, you will attract that to you. But if you out there with everybody and anybody, don't nobody want that. Don't nobody want that. Not permanently. You can be temporary. I'll be one of them, but not permanently. Those are my closing remarks today. What about Shirley? Me? Hope that answers your question. Go get your man, girl. Go get your man. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And take out all that baby hair. You ain't no baby. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 